Colin and welcome to How to Paint Watercolours. So if you're ready, we'll get started and we'll paint this one. Hello and <clears throat> welcome to How to Paint Watercolours again with me Colin and I've just stretched my paper. You've seen me do that on many other videos and I'm just taking out a dry spot in the sky while the rest of the paper still has a, a thin film of water on it. And one of the best ways you can to emphasize light is to leave a sliver of white in the sky which we are going to attempt to do now and that is why I wanted the dry spot. So this is Naples yellow. I'm just going to scruff this in here. Give my arm. cadmium yellow light and we're just going to brighten one or two, just drop this in and brighten one or two areas within the Naples yellow. Pencils marine and alizarin crimson. This is sort of a middle strength wash. You can bring it into the Naples yellow, it will just neutralize itself. stronger version and I just want to bring some some clouds take a damp brush I'm just going to soften the bottom edge in with a damp brush you won't see these behind the tree but I'm going to add them in stronger version of the same colour and we're just going to flood this part of the sky with it so it doesn't look all one flat wash soften it into the hill I want to leave a bright spot in here so I don't want this to spread too far Remember it will dry a lot lighter than with a piece of kitchen roll. I want to take the underneath of these clouds out. Remember it will back fill in a little bit. I'm going to fiddle with that anymore. I'm going to leave this and now we're going to leave this to dry. Okay now your sky is dry. I'm just going to re-wet this background hill and leaving a gap just before it touches the other hill so it doesn't run into it. I want to just keep them separate a little bit if I can. Once that's in, some Naples yellow. Push it up into the trees. Just taking some of the moisture out. We'll be coming back to this. Just change it over. This is just a little mixture of uh, Naples yellow, light red, with a tiny touch of burnt sienna. And this is Naples yellow and burnt sienna. Just dropping it in. Just soften it into the hills just to give it some shape and a little bit of form, but not much. No detail. And we'll be coming back to our sky mixture. Prince Ultramarine and Elizabeth Crimson. I'm just going to water this down. Make it very pale. Take the excess off the brush. And we're just going to test it first. As we pull it into the water. As we want this to drift. Just a tiny bit of detail on one or two of these, not much. Just to fool your eye that you're looking at a bunch of evergreens, fir trees. And as you pull off into the distance, these will get lighter and lighter as it mixes with the water and should pale off into nothing. Just 
adding a little stronger mix into the bottom of these middle ones just for some shadow taking a damp brush and just pulling some of that down I need to create just a little light patch <clears throat> around this bunch of trees here so I'm lifting some paint up around it and also into the bottom here I just want to drop some French Ulse Marine and raw umber sprinkle a bit in here as well softening it in now we have to leave that to dry now that background hills dry we come forward a little to this one and I'm just going to run some water along here and as this one's a little closer you can get a little stronger with the paint Naples yellow once again yellow ochre light red just a touch of burnt sienna in it Naples yellow and burnt sienna and along the bottom French ultramarine and raw umber just pull this gently back into the other colours and just wash it out at the back here it's not really relevant then going back to your sky colours you can make these just a little stronger so I'm just going to add a little bit more paint to that other mixture French ultramarine and alizarin crimson just to strengthen it up slightly just check it first once again pull it into the other paint allowing it to drift adding just a little bit more detail to these as these are just slightly closer make them all different sizes don't have them look like soldiers all standing up just drop a little colour in here and just bring some of your sky colour along the ridge I have got the board set at a slight angle and then taking some of the raw umber and French ultramarine I'm just going to drop this into the trees here coming forward all the time just moving on to this piece of land here and this time I'm doing away with the um, straightforward Naples yellow I just want this to be a little bit darker so this is the Naples yellow light red and a little bit of burnt sienna you can even wash this edge out a little bit here making it look lost allow the colour to creep over damp brush and just removing the excess paint from it Naples yellow and burnt sienna I'm just going to push this up into the trees here French ultramarine and raw umber just along the shorelines and allow it all to drift together once again with your sky colour laser and crimson and French ultramarine but a little stronger start above the water and pull it into it and just allow it to peter off at the end there a little bit of detail but not much just removing any excess paint French Ultramarine and Raw Umber Then also into this I just want to drop a little bit of the Cadmium Yellow from the sky it doesn't matter if it turns green in areas strengthen up the shoreline French Ultramarine and Burnt Humber I'm going to drop a little bit of this in the bottom here for shadow as well softening off all the edges at the back here and once again we're going to leave this to dry okay now that it's, it's basically all dry I hope you can notice that uh, with washing out the the sides of the picture you're actually focusing your eye into the center so I'm going to carry on I'm just going to re-wet this 
piece of land here, same again, some clean water. Quick wash of Naples yellow in the back. Dropping some raw umber and French ultramarine into that as well. Do the same to this side. Naples yellow and then French ultramarine with some raw umber. Burnt umber and French ultramarine. And I just want to drop in a little bit of the Naples yellow, light red and burnt sienna. Not much, just little hints. Soften it in. Pulling a little paint back. Now I'm going to lay the board flat and when you come back this will the board will be flat and um, we can carry on. Okay, I've laid the board flat and it's still wet and I'm just going to drop in once again along the, the shoreline some French ultramarine and burnt umber but this is a little to the brown side it won't be as dark as the next one I've put in uh, because I want this to just rest a little bit further back also add a little bit in here just soften it in just moving to a darker version of the same colour just has more blue in it just to bring the front shoreline out maybe a little bit of land jutting out there just dropping it in can brush just gently pulling this back moving back to my sky colour once again French Ultramarine and Elysian Crimson Let it merge into the colour below, all while it's still relatively wet. And I'm just going to stop it there before we pull it into the ground. Dropping some of the French Ultramarine and raw umber in. And also some of the darker French Ultramarine and burnt umber. Take my rigger brush and I'm just going to pull the top of this out with some French Ultramarine and burnt umber. Same with these two. Now I'm just pulling some detail out. <clears throat> some cadmium yellow. I just want to drop this in. Just on one side because the purple contains the blue or the morph contains the blue and all the darker colours they contain the blue so that when it hits the blue the cadmium yellow will give you a pale hinge of green and this is where you get your green colour that matches the rest of the colours that you're using I'm just going to leave that to spread a little bit French ultramarine and sepia for this one and oh, we're just going to darken up I'm going to add some dark in here for the shadow taking it up into the tree but don't go too far with it and I'm just going to leave that for a couple of minutes just to dry off before we soften the bottoms in and salt me in and burn on the once again French Ultramarine and Sepia Just softening off the bottoms here Just letting the colours run into each other Now I'm going to leave this to dry off Now that that's dry I'm just going to take some water and I'm just going to run a little bit of it up into the trees And a little bit down where the trunks are just where I want some shadow to be. Taking some of the French ultramarine and sepia. I'm just going to drop this down the middle. Allowing it to hit the water will allow it to spread. And just give the indication of some deep shadows under the trees. Just take a damp brush, soften it off. 
and then with some clean water again we're going to wet all the river, re-wet all the river area. Once again with a little na Naples yellow, just drop it in the back here. Some cadmium yellow. All horizontal strokes. Some of your land colour, Naples yellow, burnt sienna. Naples yellow, light red with a touch of burnt sienna, French ultramarine, and a lizard and crimson. All horizontal strokes. softening the lines in. They will soften naturally but I'm just ensuring a very very soft transition. And ultramarine and burnt umber. French ultramarine and sepia. Just gently pull a little bit of it down. Before I put the reflections in, <clears throat> I need this to just dry off a little bit until the shine has gone off the paper so that the reflections don't spread too far. So I'm going to give this maybe about 10 minutes. <clears throat> okay, I think it's dried off uh, enough to do this now. Let's drop some cadmium yellow in. Raw umber. French Ultramarine, soften the edge off here, just a bit more of the sky colour but it's got a little bit more blue in it just to send this to a green, just checking the spread level on this, see how far it will travel. brush and I'm just softening the edge off that's all. And ultramarine and burnt umber. Just a little bit of the cadmium yellow. And then we have to let this fully dry out. Okay, we're getting very close to finishing it now and I've just, while it was dried, I just scratched in some shore lines with a uh, craft blade or a craft knife and put some wind streaks in with the same thing using a ruler and the blade, making sure it's all nice and flat and just scrape a couple of wind streaks in. It just helps to uh, break the water up and it adds a little bit more interest. I'm just going to put a bush here, so I'm just taking some of the really dark, which is the sepia and French ultramarine. If you're enjoying these videos and uh, you've not subscribed, please consider subscribing. All subscribers are welcome and it costs you nothing. Now I'm just taking a mop brush and I'm just going to break it open. French ultramarine and burnt umber. I think that'll do it. And I think this is where you get the rounds of the best bit. This is where you get to sign it, mount it and frame it. And once again, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. Please consider subscribing and I will leave some suggestions for paintings that you might want to follow at the end of this video. And I will also leave a link in the description box that will take you to the other videos I've made for YouTube. And if you click on that link, it will take you straight there. So once again, I'd like to thank you very much for watching.